Hey guys, this is Clinton from Grimspeed, and I'm going to be walking you through the Grimspeed Equal Length Header Install for the 15-21 Subaru WRX. This is a relatively in-depth install, requiring removal of the turbo manifold and downpipe. Before we get started, let's talk about the tools we will need for the install. This is a general list, and you may find yourself needing more than what is pictured here. Now with all that out of the way, let's get started. Begin by popping your hood and locating your engine cover. Find the two clips at the top of the cover, loosen those, and firmly pull up from the bottom. Take the cover off and set aside. Loosen the two intercooler brackets as well as the charge pipe worm clamp. This will loosen everything up and make it easier to work when we get underneath the car. Next, let's raise the car up. If you're lucky enough to have a lift, this is the easy part. But if you're going to be working off jack stands, you want to get the car high enough to be able to drop the downpipe. Next, we want to remove all the protective covering from underneath the car, including the splash guard and the skid plate. The skid plate should be held on by four bolts. With the skid plate removed, you should have a clear view of the header and all the bolts we'll need to get to. Now we need to loosen our downpipe connections. Remove the two bolts that are connecting the downpipe to the midpipe. Also remove the bolt for the downpipe hanger. Right above the turbocharger, there's a bracket with two 12mm bolts. Find these bolts and remove them. You may need to use a breaker bar to help you get them out. This bracket has a small clip that the O2 sensor wiring plugs into. Remove the clip. Remove the last bracket bolt that's shown here and pull the bracket out. Next, remove the 8mm bolt holding the grounding wire onto the downpipe's heat shield. Also unclip the connections for both the primary and secondary O2 sensors. Now we can remove the four bolts holding the downpipe to the turbo. Be aware that these studs do have the tendency to snap. It can be a good idea to hit these with a little bit of PB blaster and let them sit before you try and get them out. Reaching these bolts can be a little bit tricky, but if you use a long extension and go over the downpipe, you shouldn't have a problem getting to them. While you're in there, you will see another 14 millimeter bolt holding the bracket. Remove this as well. It's not uncommon that you'll need a breaker bar to break these loose. If you do end up breaking a stud, your hardware kit includes four new studs for you to use. With all the downpipe bolts removed, you should be able to separate the downpipe from the turbo and remove it. Now let's tackle removing the turbo inlet. Loosen the worm clamp connecting the lower intake piping to the turbo inlet. 
Next, loosen the worm clamp connecting the bypass valve to the inlet. Unclip the boost control solenoid wire. Then locate the two 10mm bolts connecting the inlet to the turbo. Carefully remove both. Now the inlet should separate from the turbo and you can push it aside. Using a 10 mm wrench, loosen and remove the two bolts holding the charge pipe to the turbo. We'll also need to clamp and disconnect the water lines running to and from the turbo. Now let's undo the three bolts holding the turbo oil pan onto the turbo. There'll be two 10 millimeter bolts on the bottom and one on the side. Be sure to notice the oil gasket. It's best to replace this gasket during reassembly. Next, we can disconnect the high pressure turbo oil line using two 17 millimeter wrenches. Using a 14 millimeter wrench, loosen the two visible bottom header bolts as it's easier to do this while the header is still on the car. Now using a socket and extension, loosen the six upper nuts on the header. You may want to use PB Blaster on these to reduce the risk of you snapping the studs. It's been a lot of work to get to this point, but with these bolts removed, you should be able to lower the header turbo assembly down to the ground. With the header assembly on the ground, remove the heat shield and the heat shield bracket. This should now give you access to the other two header bolts. Using your foot to keep the header in place, or if you have a vise handy, loosen the two bolts on the top of the header. <laughs> 
Grab your new Grimspeed gasket and place it on top of the flange. Then place your new Grimspeed header onto the turbo. Use the included new hardware to loosely bolt everything together. Once you have the header mocked up on the turbo, torque the bolts to between 31 and 32 foot-pounds. Clean off all your gasket mating surfaces and apply your new exhaust manifold to head gaskets. Before installing your header, make sure that the gasket is sitting as close to the head mating surface as possible. Now raise your turbo header assembly into place and secure it with the new hardware. You will want to tighten these bolts in a sequence. Inside bolts first, going back and forth until they're seated. Then the outside bolts, going back and forth until they're all tightened to the same spec. When all the bolts are torqued down to between 31 and 32 foot-pounds, you can move on to the next step, reassembly. Reinstall the turbo oil pan, and don't forget the new gasket. Be careful not to over torque these bolts as they will strip easily. Reinstall both water lines to the turbo and remove the clamps. Reattach your charge pipe using the OEM hardware. Make sure that the O-ring seal is included. Now reconnect the high pressure oil line. Reattach the turbo inlet using the OEM hardware. Reconnect the electronic boost control solenoid. Connect the intake piping to the turbo inlet and tighten the worm clamp. Now you can reinstall your downpipe and don't forget the included gasket. Included in this kit is a new style of downpipe bracket, designed to give you a little bit of play so you can get everything lined up without having to go back and loosen your already torqued bolts. And it fits just like OEM so installation should not be a problem. Once you have your bracket in place, tighten all your nuts down to the same spec, then torque to between 31 and 32 foot-pounds. 
mount the downpipe back up to its hanger bracket. Don't forget to throw this bracket back in with all the OEM hardware. Also reattach both your O2 sensors. Tighten up the grounding wire for the downpipe. Now you can remount your skid plate using the OEM hardware. Back in the engine bay, tighten up all the intercooler bracket bolts that we loosened. Throw your engine cover back on. And you're all done with this install. If you have any questions about this install or are interested in purchasing this product, please visit our website at www.grimspeed.com.